What's up guys? Today we're going to learn about back verb, how to make that reverse reverb effect. It's very popular. It's been around for ages and uh, I've been doing it for a long time in my tracks. Uh, I'm addicted to using back verb and you can use it on a variety of different things. So what we're going to learn in this video, you can apply it to percussion, to claps, but it's very popular on vocals. So let's jump right into it. The fuck am I saying? I don't even have my headphones on. It's too early. <laughs> oh Keep that in the edit. Alright, so we got a file I recorded earlier. Let's play it back. It's gonna sound beautiful. I was going to the KFC and I realized I really need some KFC. So back verb is really well done when you use a vowel. The reason being is when you say like I, I, ah, you can create a nice effect and it really gives a lot of volume and power uh, it's the same reason why vowels are used when you want to create like a formant filter and that yo 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 any of those harsh sounds vowels are the king so that's why i opened up with with this now even if the beginning word the first letter the word doesn't start with a vowel it's okay you can still try it out but it will usually be better with a vowel so you can see here I'm saying I. So let's load up a reverb on this because it's just the drive vocal. You can use the default reverbs. You can use fruity reverb. You can use um, Valhalla reverb. So for this one, we're going to use the uh, Valhalla vintage. We're just going to tweak a few things, not too much. We're going to tweak the low cut, bring it up to just 120. The decay, that's going to be up to you. You're going to have to experiment. How big of a back verb do you want? you want it relatively short but even if you make a really big back verb really that's not important even if you made 56 second decay you can still trim it down so we'll leave that you know what we'll put 420 as the uh, decay uh, mix so I find that rather than putting the mix at a hundred percent keeping it at around 50 percent is the sweet spot and uh, I'll tell you why and I'll explain in a moment the modes, again, this will be very experimental. You might get good results with ambient. You might get good results with just uh, a basic plate reverb. So for this tutorial, we'll just keep it on concert hall. We'll leave everything else the default, uh, including the pre-delay, and let's play this back. I was going to the KFC, and I realized... That... So what we want is we want just the beginning um, so we're going to play it back and record in Edison in real time. So let's load up Edison. I have Edison on the spectrum view. If you do, just press S and you'll come back to the normal view. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch the recording mode to now. Because if you put on play or on input, the moment you stop playing on the playlist, it's going to stop recording. We want it to keep recording, especially if we have a very long trail. So we'll leave it on now. We'll hit record so this is still recording we'll uh, detach this so we can see this and what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in here and we want to play back just this beginning because that's what we want to introduce we want it to be like uh, i was going to the kfc you know that's the intended effect I would... so not there I... kind of dirty vocal. You'll get better results when you process your vocal, you clean it up, you're DSing it, you're EQing it. You'll get a back verb that has less muddiness. I... That wasn't too bad. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's take this that we made. And you can take all of it because we will fade out the spoken bit just to leave the wet reverb. So we'll, we'll disable that for now. Let's come to this part. I... That one was a bit better. We can hear the nice difference between the two. So we'll take that one. So what we have now is we have two back verbs. Let's reverse both of them. And what we'll do is we'll, to open this up, just double click, switch the mode. I'm just scrolling down my mouse wheel to smooth. And what we'll do now is we'll find where the spoken word is and eliminate it. Yeah, we don't want that. Okay, 
that's not bad. And this one, this one's smooth. Yeah. There we go, that's cool. And what we can do now is arrange this like so. I find that putting it around where the word starts, so like if it starts here, usually leaving a little fade out helps the transition. So this, the trick I found with this is shuffling the back verb, sometimes a bit to the left, a bit to the right. It doesn't necessarily have to be quantized exactly. And that's where the fade out, the smooth fade out helps a lot. It will make the transition very smooth. So let's move these guys up and we will position them. We'll just kind of eyeball this and then we'll play back to see if he's, uh, is he doing KFC back verb or, or what, you know? I had really no, I, n no intention of what I wanted to record. I was just like, I'm going to say something with a vowel in it. Bear with me here. All right, so let's try this out again. We don't know what it's going to sound like, but this is usually going to give you a good starting point. Let's play it back. I was going to the KFC and I realized I really need some KFC. And that's cool. Now what you can do to improve this, of course, we would, uh, you know, do our standard stuff, you know, clean this up a bit. There's some noise in here. And uh, I'm going to do a tutorial on how to denoise your vocals to eliminate that background hum, your PC noise. There's a really effective way of cleaning that in Edison without the need of third party plugins. But essentially, you guys can do this with, again, any reverb effect, Fruity Reverb, Fruity Reverb 2. Any reverbs that you enjoy using that are pleasing to the ear usually are going to make really nice back verbs as well. You just got to fiddle around with the settings, different modes. Uh, do you want it to be darker or brighter? And then, of course, automations. Sometimes I will go ahead and automate the volume and draw my own curve, even though it's fading in itself. So really depends on the effect that you want to do, but sounds pretty good. I really need some KFC. <laughs> so you can see there, a uh, very basic way. So just to recap, load up your vocal, find areas where you're just about to say the word. So in this case, I, I, I about 50% play around with the mix, uh, load up Edison, make sure that Edison is in the now. And when you're recording, slap it into your playlist, reverse that shit. And uh, it's fairly simple. Uh, or a lot of it is just gonna be tweaking and finding the right sound that works for you. And I would generally recommend, of course, putting this in its own instance, running an EQ on it in case there's too many lows. Um, sometimes I'll put reverb on the back verb, create some wetness, some um, space for the back verb. But that gives you an idea of how to create basic back verb, a very popular effect that's commonly used, and it helps to create tension. So it will help to create an anticipation of what's going to be said next, rather than just leaving it out completely. So it will give some good direction to your songs, it will allow you to create good effects. And uh, yeah, uh, I can see it used in pretty much any genre. Guys, if you liked this tutorial, the good old back verb, Drop a like, uh, leave me a comment, what kind of tutorials you guys wanna see in FL Studio or other programs. I primarily use FL Studio, so I'm not using uh, Ableton Live or Cubase or other DAWs, but in the future, I definitely wanna give them a shot and start learning them as well. Make sure you're subscribed. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.